I am really starting to think I should have main Titan 7 years ago. How's it going everyone, Tavius here, thank you so much for stopping by. On today's video, I'm going over an extremely fun and effective Titan arc build for running your daily activities, your strikes, gambit, crucible, and seasonal activities, plus with a few adjustments, even nightfalls. If you enjoyed this video, you already know what to do, and now let's jump straight into it. The Titan arc subclass tree we're using with this build is Code of the Missile or Middle Tree Arc. This subclass tree as it is, is one of my favorite subclasses for the Titan because of how much fun Thunder Crash is. Sadly, for Season of the Lost, there isn't really any mods in the seasonal artifact that enhance any arc subclass. For the most part, all we have is stasis and solar mods this season, but what we do have is new elemental well mods and stasis affinity armor mods to enhance abilities, so we will be definitely taking advantage of those. Okay, so with Code of the Missile, we get the Thunder Crash Super, as we already know, but we also get this thing right here, the Ballistic Slam. After sprinting for a short time, leap into the air and press the right bumper to slam into the ground and damage nearby targets. This is one of the main abilities we will be taking advantage of. Stick around, it would all come together when I go over the exotic armor and the armor mods in a minute. Inertia Override reloads your equipped weapon, grants melee energy and increases weapon damage when you slide over an ammo brick. This is a bit hard to get used to for some of us since I've been playing Warlock for 7 years. I'm not used to sliding over ammo bricks, but learning about this buff really had me more aware about ammo bricks on the ground. And the last perk for Cut of the Missile is Impact Conversion. Hitting targets with Ballistic Slam grants you super energy and activates Inertia Override. This here is also a very important part of the build because we will be using Ballistic Slam a lot, almost too much. Moving on to the armor, let's talk about our exotic leg armor, the Dune Marchers. This exotic has been with us since the release of Destiny 2, and to this day, they are one of the best exotics for Titans. For new players, if you don't have these exotic legs yet, they can drop from any world drop exotic engram or purchase from Zer on rotation. Just keep checking his inventory every Friday. Now let's dive in. Linear Actuators, the exotic armor perk, increases sprint speed. Sprinting also builds up a static charge. After melee attacking an enemy, the charge will chain damage to nearby enemies. So in short, after sprinting for a short time, punch one enemy and spread chain lightning to the rest. Simple. The thing is that this also works with Ballistic Slam, since Ballistic Slam is considered a melee ability and consumes your melee. Anyway, getting ahead of myself here. By the way, this is also very effective in PvP. The chain lightning with Ballistic Slam is deadly inside the Crucible. So this build with a few adjustments on the guns could be very effective in PvP also. Okay, so next let's talk about the armor mods and we'll talk about the gun options at the end because there is a few. On my helmet, I've got hands-on to get super energy with melee kills, which if you've been following, we will be doing a lot of. I've also got a shotgun ammo finder because I have a shotgun equipped, but this depends on your preference and elemental armaments to spawn arc elemental wells by getting kills with an arc weapon. This one is extremely important to get our melee back quick, you'll see. Now on my arms I have the stasis affinity, so I was able to equip the new mod for Season of the Lost, Melee Kickstart. When your melee energy is fully expended, you gain melee energy. This one refills a big chunk of your cooldown, around 8 seconds, so make sure your arms have the stasis affinity so you can equip this mod. And if you don't have this mod, it's obtainable from the Wayfinder's Compass. I've also equipped the Well of Potency mod from the Seasonal Artifact. Picking up a matching Elemental Well grants you super energy. Remember that we have the Elemental Armaments mod on our helmet, spawning Arc Wells with Arc Weapon kills. Okay, let's continue. My chest piece has Shotgun and Sword Reserves, because that's my weapon of choice, but this is totally up to you. The important one here is Well of Striking. Picking up Arc Elemental Wells grants you additional melee energy, so Elemental Wells already grants ability energy, but with this mod you get almost half of your melee back. This is getting nuts already. Okay, next, the Dune Marchers. I have Invigoration, which reduces melee cooldown each time you pick up a normal power. Extremely useful. Then I have a Sword Scavenger, again because I have a sword for my heavy weapon, but like I said, we have choices for this build. Give me a minute, we'll get there. And the last mod on the Dune Marchers is Well of Ions. Picking up an Arc Elemental Well causes your next melee to deal increased damage. Yep, that Ballistic Slam be slapping everyone in Gambit during testing. So much fun. Moving on to the class item, I have Bomber to reduce grenade cooldown using class ability. Not essential, but I figure I need some grenades also. 
can't just go around punching my way out of every situation, or can I? I also equip healthy finisher cause I like my veggies, and finishers heal you using one tenth of your super. Super useful. Believe me, it's worth the one tenth of your super when you're surrounded and about to die, just activate your finisher and you're saved. No joke. And for the very last mod, we have Melee Wellmaker. Power melee final blows spawn elemental wells matching your subclass energy type, so arc. As you can see, we have several mods that spawn arc elemental wells for us, which will replenish all of our abilities, especially melee and super. Before we go over weapons, let me talk briefly about my stats, because I focused on melee regeneration while also keeping an eye on my resilience. Since we're going to be up close with the enemy, we're also going to be taking a lot of damage and even though we have the healthy finisher mod to heal us when performing a finisher, we still need a decent amount of resilience to not die from a stun mechanic. So my melee has a cooldown of 41 seconds and my resilience is a tier 6, but if you can have your resilience higher, even better. Now let's dive into the weapons. Initially I tested this build with one of my favorite exotics. If you've been watching my videos, you'll be able to guess this one, the Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo replenishes your melee super fast with kills, and it is a pretty good choice also because it can stun anti-barrier champions. But I had the most fun with the all-reliable Wrist Runner, the first exotic weapon all the new lights get when starting the game. Remember, we're talking PvE here. Strikes, Grading Gambit, Seasonal Activities, etc. Spawn Arc Elemental Wells constantly to get us melee energy and supers. Let's read the description. Arc Conductor. When taking arc damage, this weapon becomes more powerful and resists incoming arc damage. Kills extend the time in this overcharged state. So you can see how with this combo of Wrist Runner, Dune Marchers and Code of the Missile, you really become a chain lightning demon. For my kinetic weapon, I went with the shotgun since I'll be in close proximity with the enemy, but if you're going with Monte Carlo, then you could run Salvager Salvo in the energy slot, which is arc and comes with chain reaction. Another awesome option. And for my heavy weapon, I chose the crown splitter for boss damage. The only downfall to this is not having a long range weapon, but you can switch to a linear fusion rifle on your heavy to cover that area, or even rockets. Okay, so now I'll do the rapid fire recap on how this works, and then I'll give you guys a few tips if you want to jump into the crucible with this build. First, remember Wrist Runner uses primary ammo, so you don't need to worry about ammo. Also, of course, if the enemy has arc shields, this will work even better. Wrist Runner kills will spawn elemental wells with the elemental armaments mod. Picking those up will grant you extra melee energy with the Well of Striking mod. You'll also get super energy with the Well of Potency mod. And power up your next melee with the Well of Ions mod. From here you can run a bit and jump up to activate your Ballistic Slam on a few enemies. Not only you'll do extra damage to the ones closest to the slam, but also spread chain lightning to the ones who are a bit further. Any enemies killed by Ballistic Slam grant you super energy as per the description and with the hands-on mod, while immediately getting refunded melee energy with the melee kickstart stasis mod on your arms. You just quickly pick up a couple arc elemental wells and orbs of power and you got your melee right back ready for another Ballistic Slam, or a regular melee whichever you prefer. Just remember, you have to keep running to keep your Dune Marchers and the Ballistic Slam active. Also, don't forget about Inertia Override when you see an ammo brick. Slide and you get melee and increased weapon damage, great to power up the crown splitter. Now if you're jumping into PvP with this build, you can bump up your resilience stat a bit more if you want to be running up to the enemy with the shotgun. Running around corners and punching with chain lightning is super fun in the crucible. Just hope there isn't a hunter with shatter dive around the corner waiting for you. Wrist Runner isn't the best choice for the crucible, but if the enemy team is using arc weapons, it could be deadly. Can't believe I'm going to say this, but slide and shotgun with this build is really fun. Oh, and be careful with the Ballistic Slam, because even though it's very powerful, sitting up in the air for a second before it activates is dangerous. And there it is guys, we made it. You have to try this one out if you haven't. I've tried the Dune Marchers in the past, but never made a build focused on it. And mixed with the Code of the Missile, it's even better. Oh yeah, and I completely forgot to mention Thunder Crash. You get it pretty fast in PvE activities. Try it out. Also, there's a charge with light variation you can do with this build. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to pin it down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, a like and heavy attack on that subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Also, click on that bell to be notified when my next video drops. My name is Stavius Place. thank you for your viewership, and if you'd like to watch other informative Destiny 2 videos, you can click here.
Portal's ready. Grab your gun. One down. Two down. Another. Ten seconds. 